It's the holiday plus one season, episode number 63. I get you dancing to the dicky 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 to do. This is my town. Expect more and pay less at Target. Come on, who doesn't shop at Target? Today's episode of the Keep It 100 Girl Show is brought to you by Target. As cooler weather quickly approaches in December, Target is offering 30% off sweaters for the whole entire family. You just got to use the promo code SWEATERS30 from November 20th through to the 23rd. And parents, listen up. As more play comes inside, take advantage of 20% off toys and sporting goods using the promo code KIDSGIFTS. For those of you who have already started decorating for the holidays, look, you're going to get 50% off Wonder Shop, Christmas trees, and other trees. And for the fashionistas out there, enjoy BOGO 50% off jewelry, watches, handbags, and wallets. All right, peeps, and you already know Target's Black Friday ad has been leaked. So all you got to do is check out their limited time offers on their dedicated Black Friday page found in this week's show notes. Adding to the holiday cheer, Target, remember, has free standard shipping and returns on all orders through December 20th. Link to this week's deals from my website, ninababel.com backslash podcast. You're going to look for episode number 61. Or you know what? Just to make things easier, just look in the show notes right there on your phone. You click on the Target shopping link and voila, you just start shopping. I get you there. Live from the DMV, and that's code word for Washington, D.C., welcome back to the Keep It 100 Girl podcast. As always, thanks for joining me today for 50 Shades of Cray Cray. I'm your hostess with the Keep It 100 Girl most It's Nina Babel. And you know what? If you're joining me for the first time, I help women, and today, especially you men, celebrate embarrassment in their lives. All right. Some of the time, this is the no prude zone where I get both men and women to tell the truth, nothing but the truth, even if it's totally embarrassing or super cray cray. I share what everyone is thinking, but not saying out loud. Our stories are real, rhetorical and true. No made up shit here. (laughs) We're real shitters. This is a generation that has a lot of negative influences. I make sure and add the humor to the basics that, you know what, most of us already think we know, but we don't do a good job of following. Or you know what, we just don't know what those basics are for one reason or another. In addition to my own experiences, real women, they give their real mother friggin' advice. One rule of my podcast is we overshare. We don't hold back. There's no filters, no judgments. Girly Nation, are you ready to keep it 100? My hand is raised. How about yours? Yes, I'm ready to keep it 100. I'm ready to keep it 100, girl. You know I'm going to keep it 100. (laughs) All right, so in last week's episode, we learned about asking the hard questions. And maybe you're a rookie in this area, and I hope you learned something, but... I want to encourage you not to be off-putting and just throw all those questions out there to scare him either. Be strategic. Ask the questions that make sense at every stage of your relationship, whether it's not even a full-fledged relationship, you guys are just exploring each other. Example, you just don't want to ask homegirls or homeboys credit rating from day one. You may want to go for the softer questions, right? Like what's on your bucket list for 2017 or what was your nickname growing up? Just to get a sense of how people view them in and outside of their relationship and what their preferences are. So I asked one of my longtime buddies how he felt about this episode and this is what he said. I think the question that you should be asking first is just within yourself. Is like, how do I feel about this person? And then, you know, at some point down the road, you can get into the, you know, uh, you know, are they going to crash my my credit rating or something? That kind of thing. You can get into that stuff another time. So, for the record, I was not in total agreement. Call me a little more linear than Jay, but here's my story. I feel the I feel the total opposite. Because yeah. I'm not going to admit feelings to you 
if I know your credit is like jacked. Wow. <laughs> no, because it's going to fall on my lap, Chris. I mean, like, let's just, you know, if it does get serious, it's like, that's a conversation that needs to be had. Like, okay, how do we... It can't be had. We, huh? Don't get me I'm not saying it can't be had. I, I, I think these are these are important things to conversations to have. I'm just saying, at what point do you have them? I wouldn't have them so early. Like it just then it feels like this just it's just this is a business relationship. Like it's there's there's too much of that stuff up front. You know what I mean? And it's like I'm going to judge my my feelings about you, uh, you know, based on your credit rating kind of thing. You know, and it's. Or or, or 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 that or that oh he's got a great credit rating and then that I up your feelings about him you know what I mean like it's no weird. but my point in that episode is that it should be a phased approach right so you don't want to bombard Chris with questions A through Z on the first date or you know right. early on you just kind of want to take like a partial list and just kind of ease into it. Yeah. You know, it's part of like the getting to know you phase. Yeah. And then like once you move into like whether you call it the sick well, I call it the six month or where you feel like, you know, I have feelings for this person and maybe it's a year where you just need to like to have these what if scenario type questions, behavior right. situational, like how would you handle, you know, these are part of getting to know you. So also last week we learned about LDRs, which are long distance relationships and how it can be the most singlest feeling, especially when you need a cuddle or two. It's not a real relationship, people. It's demanding. Those interactions lose their meaning over time and it causes you to lose touch with reality And in the end, it's just not worth it. That's just my opinion. So for many, including me, I consider LDRs a waste of time. And I wouldn't say this if I didn't try it, if I didn't road test it and gave it a chance. The only glimmer of hope out there for you long distance relationshipers is for those of you who have a foundation, right? You already are in a committed relationship and you're taking it to the next level, whether it's being engaged, whether it's being married, maybe you're considering uprooting and moving in with him. But if a relationship space is important to you, then hey, (laughs) this is the perfect arrangement. But on the flip, you know what? It gets costly, not only financially, but mentally and emotionally. So just know that. The 10 Days of Deals is here from Target. On Tuesday only, get 25% off beauty products using the promo code BEAUTY. And look all snatched and beautiful for Thanksgiving. It's valid until November 22nd. Today kicks off the Single Dumb series. And... That's exactly what you heard. Single and dumb combined into single dumb. So the single is self-explanatory, right? You just don't have a man or a woman in your life. The dumbness is the foolery and fuckery singles put up with, participate in, while we seek that long-distance committed relationship. in holiday season mode, which means that, you know what? This is an open casting call for recycled and repeated saving face foolery (laughs) from here until New Year's Eve. Whether you are single, newly single, in a new relationship, divorced, or a widow, (laughs) this applies to you. Oh, so I call this whole holiday season like the hot toddy holiday season, and hot is a double T. It brings out all the characters peeking or coming out of nowhere, blindsided you for those holiday dinners, invites, and plus one invites to all the holiday parties from here to 2017. All they do is play in reindeer games. So if you're over 30, when it comes to these like family gatherings that happen more frequent in like a two month period than ever throughout the year, 
You hear the whole, you're getting to be old, single noise. Now, this is a time of year where people get sensitive about being single. So we all agree, bringing a plus one can make or break everything in a relationship or even friendship. If I meet your family and I don't like them, maybe I don't ever want to be part of your family then I'm already thinking the relationship is fast-tracking to an expiration date here. Which leads me to some unwritten rules of bringing a plus one. Number one, um, where family's involved, you just don't bring anybody. Wendy is a single black millennial who shares her rules of thumb. Keep this. I have, you know, this unrepentant, you know, grandmother. And so she has zero filter. And so she will say what she's thinking. I made the mistake one time of bringing a guy who I had learned on the way home, like to Ohio, I learned that he had had some time in prison. And so I'm just like, please, dear Lord, baby Jesus, don't let this come out at the table. And it didn't. But my grandma could tell that something was just not. And he said, I can't even remember what he said, but my he made some kind of off the cuff, you know, joke. And my grandmother said, ha, that sounds like something you'd hear in prison. <gasps> Everyone just got silent because they're like, why are you being so weird? And he's like, ha, ha. she's like, that laugh tells me you've spent time in prison. I was like, oh, oh. like hide under the table no dessert I just want to go <laughs> it was the worst so I learned that my major unspoken role is they have to be able to hold their own and they have to be able to match toe to toe with you know my what my family expects of me I can't bring a rando and I'm not the type to try to get under my family skin so bring someone that's going to irritate them because my grandma will eat them to sh- eat them into pieces <laughs> it'll be worse for them than it'll be for anybody else Jay is divorced and he's in his 40s and you know what? He makes a distinction between meeting the parents versus friends during the holiday season. This stuff is pretty new to me, but but I would, for me, um, if it's just uh, a friend's, like a friend, like, you know, my good friend, you know, know me a long time, they're having their little uh, Christmas thing or whatever. And as somebody I'm dating that I maybe like like if I can kind of tell that she's not necessarily doing something um uh, man that's tricky that's tricky I I think it depends on where it is like I say because I don't want to okay I'll say this much I'll back it up if it's like my parents no way am I bringing bringing somebody to my parents place if I don't have strong feelings for this person no chance it's like Hey, have a good time at your at your Christmas. So uh, I'll probably text you later or something like that. There's, there's, just, there's no way. Number two, if you bring or decide to bring a nobody, girl, he better be fine. Number three, <laughs> we don't do facades around this piece. We keep it real. And speaking of real, here's some real life holiday season scenarios that some of you have either participated in or are certainly familiar with. Okay, so arm candy, eye candy, and melanin looking candy. You're his or her random arm candy with no formal announcement. You just show up and he or she doesn't give you that formal intro to the fam or the friends. Damn! But no matter what, he or she will fix your plate for you because you know what? You are going to appear to be his main (laughs) with no sides. Random rules. So you're dating somebody and you have that Kim Kardashian, Chris Humphreys, fast lane type of relationship where things are just moving too, too fast, even though you've been dating for a few months. So when is it too soon? When is it appropriate or that appropriate time to bring a date to Thanksgiving, Christmas, or even New Year's, that family function over the holidays? Is it just immediate family or do you introduce them to the whole family tree? If it's early in a relationship, like under four months, here's what Jay says his rules are. If it's a friend, 
you know, my buddies having a little little get together type of thing, and it's still very early. Um, uh, that's different. I, I may or may not, you know, I, I may, you know, I, I may or may not, uh, depending on how how early it is. Like if it's if it's still relatively early, and and maybe uh, I think things are going nicely, but uh, you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. 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 You know what I mean? Like, my parents definitely not. Like anybody or relatives or you know my uncle or something like that. Like yeah, no. Right. That that's a, that's that means something to me. Um. Yeah, my friends are a little bit different because they can kind of see me with this girl, and and the next time it's like, oh, what happened to Jennifer or whatever. You know, that's that's different. My friends, I feel like I can kind of explain the way things better (laughs) (laughs) okay so if it's a random barbecue auntie uncle cousin god so-and-so party maybe that's fine but not thanksgiving christmas or new year's nope for me i come from a family of intellectuals like everyone in my family has phds I'm like the only one without a PhD. So if I bring somebody to the table, he has to be able to match them, you know, toe to toe or they'll eat them alive. And like they can smell it like the blood in the water. If if I'm bringing someone who's ignorant or, you know, you can't bring the guy or girl that you just think is good in bed. That's not the person you bring to Thanksgiving dinner. You bring maybe the person that's not so great in bed, but is an awesome conversationalist or someone who, you know, your parents would be like, oh, like, I like them. Like, oh, he's a lawyer. Oh, like that's the person I bring. I don't bring, you know, the any random. No, no randos get to come to Thanksgiving. (laughs) It is not an option. So by law, randoms don't make it to family functions. You are classified as a random until I say you aren't. Period. The unofficial awkward turkey talk. Do you take your cuffing partner out in public or even to your family? Admittedly, It's a relationship internship kind of thing that you're exploring. But do they make it to the table? Next, we have the entitlement piece. It's the haughty thoughties entitlement claim. These claims go like this. You know, it's my birthday. I want dinner and a gift season because you know what? I've been screwing you all summer. So screw it season continues. Or you know what? Um, I just consider myself the latest and greatest flavor of the month. Oh my gosh. Yes. You know, that's an actual industry. Yes. Like men or women who will essentially you pay them and they will be essentially whoever you need them to be. With no sex? Just like an escort? Not that I know of. It's just like an, a professional escort who, oh. you know, will come and, you know, and be awesome wine, dine, snooze, and be, you know, really charismatic and then you never see him again. <laughs> <laughs> That's the agreement. Right. But I guess if I was in a position where maybe it was like my sixth holiday coming home alone, then maybe, okay, yeah, I might bring somebody. But I don't know that I've ever hit a point where I would be that needy. Now it's holiday gigolos, right? In my come and talk to me, Jodeci voice, I don't like sharing family holiday food with without a commitment or knowing I have one. I don't know about you, but I don't knowingly place myself on the bench. The bench roster for invites. If we're official, we are a couple. And we're shooting free throws and hoops around the gym on a regular. And if not, I'm taking my ass off the court. Thirsty holiday gigolos want in during the holiday season. Hmm. There's no such thing as your share and our share. If you're my boo, we're exclusively dating, and you have that extra pound cake to look forward to. And lastly, all for show. These are the folks that are all for show. They totally overlook reality and are obsessed with fantasy. They want to kiss under the mistletoe just before midnight on New Year's Eve. The other side of the all for show population is... 
not being seen as single during the holidays, especially the work-related holiday parties where you don't want to publicly reveal the reality of your personal life. Because you know what? People get embarrassed about publicly revealing that they're single every holiday period, especially if you've been at that job for years. It definitely does have a reflection upon you in a positive and a negative light sometimes. Sometimes you're given more work because you don't have a family. So, you know, it's like, I don't want the extra work. It's not like a family. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then other times it's like, you know, we sent you on this trip because you don't have a family. So it can work out on both ends. But yeah, I think definitely... When I was in corporate world, I used to, I was always in a relationship, but like if I was around the holidays and didn't have a relationship, I'd have one of my good guy friends come with me or, you know, like my neighbor and have him come with me just because I didn't want to go alone. All I can say is this. People have an exit strategy for any of those scenarios or make up one. These Thanksgiving scenarios sound like Tinder dates or it's all just for show. Screw it. I mean, who who wants to be, never mind, uh, a plus one for somebody who, you know, you don't necessarily feel that strongly about or or never mind. They're they're coming thinking that, oh, I think she likes me that way, you know, and and then you have to. Yeah. So that first impression outfit, (laughs) just leave it for the interview. This whole like plus up thing is a super headache. You know, bringing people around your family is a big deal, no matter how folks try to rationalize it. The status of any relationship needs to be clear, crystal clear and understood prior to meeting any family or friends. So there's no awkwardness during the holiday season. And you know what? There's some people that just don't care. So when you introduce the person and when you explain to your fam and friends the significance or insignificance of the relationship, they could sniff all that out. So join the conversation. What's the benchmark for the right time to introduce your significant other to the family when the holidays come up? You could leave your opinion on the comments or you could just tweet and respond to episode number 63. And that wraps up another episode of the Keep It 100 Girl Show. Your go-to girlfriend is here to empower you every week, people. This week's message is to get familiar with what you're getting yourself into over the holiday season. And it's okay to be happily single without embarrassing yourself, especially in front of your family, because you know what? Your family does not forget. Nina brings socially and sexually awkward taboos out in the light that most of us will only share with our girlfriends or just keep it to ourselves. I talk to my listeners like I talk to my own girls with advice about failures, successes, embarrassing choices, and you know what? Those aha moments that (laughs) put us all in check. My podcast is a woman's audio handbook of mantras dedicated to you all who are too shy, nervous, and embarrassed to ask those sensitive questions about sex, dating, love, or even your sexual health. I'm going to give you that muscle power you need to make informed decisions, but this time with confidence. By the end of this episode, this is what I want you to say. Oh my God, that's so me. I want you to have a chuckle. I want you to think of this experience as relatable. If you want to share your story, drop me a line, question, or pitch your own 50 shades of cray cray. Even if it's something really, really small, don't hesitate. Just hit me up and send me a quick email to ask at ninababel.com and tell me what you're struggling with right now. Episodes of the Keep It 100 Girl Show drop every Tuesday on iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, and iHeartRadio. Connect with me on social using the handle at Nina Babel. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and you can check out the Keep It 100 Girl Facebook page. That's my reel for this week. Smooches! <laughs> Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.